Aloha Aquascaping World, this is Stephen Chong joining you with the third edition of the Contest Calendar Update 2024. Um, unfortunately, this episode is coming later than I was hoping. This is now um, April 5th, the first week of April. I really want to do this episode during March because that is the last stretch to getting the tank filled. As you can see behind me, there's water inside of the first um, of my contest aquariums. You really do want to get plants in, water in. I mean, for me, the ideal would be the beginning of March. Um, I believe I filled this during the, either the second or third week of March. I did a pretty good job this year, I think, um, getting this tank set up for its husbandry. And it's coming along quite well in terms of maturity. The whole tank is swamped with algae, which is kind of where you want to be in the gunk phase before like really you want to get as much maturity as possible in a contest tank as early as possible anyway um even like the greatest masters who have you know um farm tanks all year round who have a developed stock of plants who have like the skills and also the game plan with their plants to like really get things in line crisp and clear they want at least eight weeks if not more so um, if you don't have your tank filled at this point and you are you were aiming for the IAPLC, you're still kind of going through some hardscape or you're in the very beginning of a planting process that might take you a couple of weeks, then I would say maybe it's best to aim for some of the later year contests. We are blessed to have a whole suite of great international contests these days, um, KIAC and CIPS is making a comeback. Um, CIPS being the Chinese international contest that's been out for a few years, welcome back to the scene. You know, that is a great event or was a great event. I had the honor of representing Japan actually in 2019 um, and going to Shanghai uh, for that event. I would have preferred to go to Guangzhou because honestly, Hua uh flower market in Guangzhou is absolutely amazing and if you have the chance to go i would say go um jeff miyatke my buddy who is the ambassador at wase he was supposed to go and meet me that year for the first time in person uh during 2019 but some other things came up i'm sure we'll hopefully have an opportunity to meet up soon oh so other contests um of course i think kiac is the big one you know really great stuff coming out of the, the results from last year were incredible that contest has really come together and you know deservedly um taking a lot of attention so a lot of end of june deadlines to go for for international contests i would aim at unfortunately we've lost the iiac you know the long-standing ista international aquascaping contest um out of taiwan had you know fantastic contest i was honored to place in the 30s twice really wish that i could have um brought my best effort forward for that contest one of the years because it was clear the passion the like the effort of all of, everyone involved with the contest from the competitors and the judges and the staff it was an incredible effort and i hope that ista can bring it back oh and also i mean um uh, more maybe more importantly that i hope all the folks at ista and all of the hobbyists in taiwan life aqua included life aqua represent you know, um, Andy reached out to me, Andy Tam, the president of Life Aqua told me that he and his staff were all doing great. Unfortunately, like there was a huge earthquake out there. Um, you know, keep safe, keep safe everyone. We actually had an earthquake here in New York this morning, but um, a lot of crazy things going the world around the world. And I just hope that all my brothers and sisters in the hobby everywhere, um, are finding themselves in you know the safest place they can be at the time anyway um so back to the talk about contests kiac cips and then of course aga um you you want to look at like and then there are um international categories in a lot of different contests that you might want to aim at of course a lot of local regional contests please don't think that you know, sticking to the calendar for IPLC is all there is. But if you are going for IPLC, you will want to have your had your tank filled at this point. 
I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do this year. My plans are still kind of up in the air. I am working on my second hardscape. Uh, I'm kind of playing around with it now. Not quite sure what I'm gonna do, but I definitely want to wrap this next hardscape up in the next few weeks. And like I said, I have the advantage of hmm, an idea and strategy that revolves around reusing plants and reusing theme. So, um, you know, if I can get a certain degree of maturity and strength inside this aquarium, I'm, I've got, <laughs> you can see that there's actually, um, I bought a cheap net, metal net um, at Daiso that would act as like a planter. Um, in the back of that aquarium, it has a bunch of plants that will eventually find their home in a second contest tank in front of me. Um, so I am, you know, tr doing my best to uh, build a, a planting maturing strategy that will work for both contest tanks to get them ready for their eventual photo shoot when the time comes. <clears throat> um, let me speak a little bit about like strategy in terms of plant growth for contest aquariums. Like, it is really different from daily maintenance. I would say that like daily maintenance, what you really want to be thinking about is like the breadth of the tank, water changes, water changes. The main ingredients to, you know, a healthy plant to tank are balance between light, CO2, and then water condition. <coughs> mm, sorry. <coughs> um, water condition, Main important things being water changes um, and filtration. And of course, if you can do some um, you know, external filtration like RO, RO unit into the aquarium beforehand, that would be great. Um, I used an ADA water um, when I was in Japan. I haven't gotten around to getting myself a new unit. So hey, any uh, folks out there who would want to um, sponsor getting me an RO unit of some type, reach out because I need it. Right now, I have no idea what the water like is in New York. I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants, but I have to say looking pretty good. I mean, right now, as I'm, uh, I think I mentioned that it's kind of an algae gunk fest in there, but that's perfectly fine because I'm seeing new leaves. I'm seeing uh, most of the plants. Um, yeah, melting, of course, but melting is typical. I'm hope I mean, in the melting process, there'll probably be a few plants that don't make it. There'll probably be some um, species that don't do as well as I'd hoped. Uh, but that's just kind of the game. You know, everyone's water is different. Everyone's um, condition in a certain aquarium is different. So one thing that, you know, fukara -san would mention to me, and he mentioned this when we went to Portugal as well, is don't get depressed about um, not being able to grow every single kind of plant. I mean, if you're Dennis or if you're Tom, you'll figure that out. But uh, for most of us mere mortals, it's okay. If all you care about is doing well in a contest, you don't need to be able to grow every single plant extremely well. Uh, if you have a certain toolkit that you know that you can grow well, that you know you can do well with, um, and you can keep expanding that toolkit with experience, right? Then, uh, then it's fine because if you have a toolkit that fits the theme of what you're going for, then you're going to be able to complete a really great aquarium and you can experiment with new species. And if some of them die, so be it, whatever, just replace it with something new or, you know, increase the amount of the base toolkit that you have. For me this year, I'm seeing, um, like a lot of the species that I decide to choose, I'm going with a lot of Echinodorus actually, yeah, that'll be interesting. But um, yeah, like most of the species in here, I'm seeing new growth, I'm seeing new leaves, I'm seeing great colors and lots of underwater leaves coming in. So I'm not worried. Um, whatever's going on there is doing fine. Honestly, like the tank is pretty damn pampered in terms of hardware. Uh, and of course, this is a huge aquarium. So huge water volume, right? That already gives whatever's going on a huge advantage. But yeah, so um, let's talk a bit about this new setup. So the first of the tanks, like, and things are gonna be moving around, trust me, because it is, as I said, a strategic operation. It's an ongoing operation. This is what you're here for, um, joining me for the contest calendar. But like on top of the tank right now, we have um, lighting from both Ultim Nature System and Life Aqua. Thank you to both 
of these com- amazing companies. Anyway, with Life Aqua, it's Andy's company. Uh, they're real. Andy's super serious about his lights. This is the Prime Pro, and I have over there the Prime Pro EX. Eventually, Life Aqua's lights are both going to end up on that side. But, you know, um, the, the UNS Titans were more than enough to light this whole aquarium and it looks great. But the thing is, as I mentioned, a contest tank is different from a daily uh, maintenance tank where the main thing is to focus on balance, to focus on the life breath of the aquarium. Um, maybe six, seven hours and, um, you know, find the right balance once a week water changes the type of deal that you'd imagine but <clears throat> no that's not we're going here um in the contest tank what we want is as much maturity as rapidly as possible which means like pushing the envelope on a whole lot of things like maxing out on light going overboard a bit with um with co2 even maybe going over a bit aboard with going overboard a bit with lighting hours. Like when I want to do regular maintenance on a long-term requirement, I might hold six, seven hours and do the typical ADA type of method. But for a contest tank in its early weeks when you're on a uh, tight time lock, and especially if I'm trying to get plants in a very matured state for two contest tanks, then um, yeah, maybe not seven hours, maybe more want to push towards eight nine and get as much light over the aquarium as possible as i mentioned um the <coughs> uh, prime pro over here is eventually going to go join the prime pro ex on the other aquarium the color of both set of life aqua lights is incredible and you can uh, balance a few different settings uh, including like a more bluish one similar to what you see in other leds but uh, Life Aqua is interesting because they really pride themselves on a more natural sunlight type of color. And I actually have, um, okay, so like this is the Prime Pro EX and on this one, I've actually changed it to be the more bluish color right now. But even then you can see it's not as blue as like the, UN, uh, the UNS Titans over here. But I did that because honestly, when I changed the um, Prime Pro EX to its natural sunlight setting it's gonna make my face look super pink that's the kind of the weird part about um making using it as a youtube light i would say let me try to adjust the see if you can see that yeah so you can see right it looks a lot more reddish but in person to my eye when i see this light um when i see this light I'd say it looks really natural. It does look like really sunlight-ish. So despite what it might look like for uh, my iPhone, trying to put together this YouTube video, I'd rec really recommend uh, this light color mix for those who really want the natural look of like a very clear type of water body. But I'm gonna change it back to the more bluish setting so that you guys aren't seeing my pink face for the rest of the uh, video let's see yeah and like the life aqua units also work with the different um <clears throat> the smart plug and the app that they've developed lots of cool toys i haven't gotten into all of it honestly um i will have to experiment more going forward but as i said the prime pro is sitting up here just for the time being because just for the time being, because um, like I said, I want as much light and as much power over this aquarium right now in order to drive the plants hard for the next couple of weeks um, as I'm getting the other contest tank ready to accept plants. So <clears throat> the Ultim Nature unit, um, the Ultim Nature System Titans, I've also really liked. They're so sleek. And the crazy thing to me about um, these lights is how light they are, because I've had um, ADA units in the past and geez like this is so easy to hang up and it's so light and easy to work with and um, I'd say that like 
a lot if you like watch um chris lookup's videos uh, or like some of the other um you know the other different type of underwater nature photography type of um content like it's it's striking how blue things are right when you're in water when you're in clear body systems so i think that uh, you know, blue twinge is also quite nice. I really like the way that modern LEDs look as well. Definitely a lot of color mix inside of the Titans. Um, it's kind of, it, it honestly looks weird with both brands on top of it, which is why I really want to move the, for my own enjoyment, I want to split them up pretty soon. But right now, you know, this is the attitude you should take as a contest aquascaper. Forget your personal enjoyment for now, or at times, Sometimes the important thing is to drive the point home. You're aiming towards a goal, right? There will be a time where you are at your, you're, you're getting over the hump of the planted aquarium setup. You can go into Zen mode. You can pull a hit hong and just be like, okay, I'm going to really delve into the soul of my enjoyment time. And um, no, that's not what we're doing right now. This is ruthless. This is war. And so, um, whatever you need to do to seize victory, then no. But that's not the attitude I'm taking towards this year, but that's definitely the attitude I take in general. And sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? And what I'd also like to do is put a massive amount of filtration on top of the tank. So you can see that I actually have three canister filters on here. There's two um, Ulta Nature System Delta 120s, and there's also an Oase um, 850. Sorry. So, there, yeah. What was it? Yeah, that's right. 850. I got it right. Um, there's also an Oase 850 uh, thermo underneath here. Let me see. You can see. The full setup. Oh, and also my life aqua, my life aqua katana scissor case, wood case for, but though know, the katana scissors have now come over here and joined the rest of my tools. It's engraved with my name, Stephen Chong on the label. I don't know if you guys can see. Anyway, amazing light scissors, by the way. Um, we talked more about those in previous videos, but like, so with three canister filters under there, all running, and I have to say, guys, because um, previously I had an Eheim, um, I think it's called E3 Pro filter on my um, tank back in Japan. And I only had the one, right? Like, uh, you know, Eheim's um, aquariums are fantastic. And they always had great performance to me, but I never found them to be very user friendly, which is the really frustrating thing. Um, that said, and I, I, I can't say the service, customer service was that great in Japan, um, but like good, durable performance. And there was a reason why, like, you know, Eheim was the foundational brand for nature aquariums. Um, recommended to me even by like ADA stores for many, many years. But now working with the Deltas and with Oasis, like the amount of, I mean, how far we've come in terms of easiness for use is like incredible. I found the setup for um, both filters to be incredibly easy, which is like the, <laughs> I just hate it when I'm trying to prime a filter and it, it like, it's like a nightmare and there's water all over the place and um, I, I have to suck to get things going. No, I had no troubles. Like the priming for all three of these filters was incredibly easy and straightforward. Um, and like the flow is fantastic. I've got the, um, so I have, I don't know what's standard for the hobby in the US, but when I was a, a college kid, like what was recommend what was recommended to me on the forums was getting a CO2 gas canister filter from Air Gas, so that's what I did. I just found my local Air Gas here in New York. Um, Life Aqua gave me new CO2 um, equipment for the aid um, for the <clears throat> for the so 
In Japan, the canister, the canisters have a different uh, mouth, right? So I had to get all new setup and Andy provided. I really love um, the, just the entire Life Aqua CO2 setup. You can see I have my reactor as well. Sorry about that, I dropped my phone. Anyway, as I was saying, I have the, well, first what I have is all plastic pipes because this is also a Fukata uh, philosophy. Screw lily pipes, screw the glass. You know, <laughs> when you're going for a contest, it's like that does not matter, man. I really do like those clear plastic pipes on the, um, on the UNS deltas, very beautiful. But honestly, like the Oase is more kind of, <coughs> you know, standard industrial type of look really doesn't bug me either. What really counts for a contest aquascaper is form, is, uh, you know, function over form, I should say, you know, get things working and working well. And what I was talking about before and is really working well is the Life Aqua CO2 system. I have both a reactor as well as an inline, um, an inline, <coughs> reactor um from uh from andy's company and <laughs> i have used ada co2 systems in the past i've used some american brands as well but i've never used a co2 um regulator that was just so easy to use as the life aqua system it's so smooth it's so easy to set up um i don't feel like i barely touch it almost never constantly fiddling with it. And even if I do have to fiddle, this, this dial just moves so smoothly, so easily. And the adjustments are from both sides. It's just so easy to use and work with. And I also appreciate like the fact that it, the, wire, the inline wire splits and that there are different country, um, yeah, like he's being very careful about making it internationally available. So like the different plug units that come with it and the inline rig, the inline um, reactor, it's just, it never clogs. It's super easy, so super smooth. And I just um, am always getting wonderful micro bubbles. Never go back to a CO2 diffuser, honestly. Um, so as you can, oh, and let's see. Oh, also got the um, Oase. Uh, what was it? Clear skimmer? Was it? Is that what it was called? Sorry. Crystal skim. Yeah. Never having any issues with um, scum on top of the tank. It's just so you can sell the whole system is getting extremely pampered. And that is really great because like <laughs> because I'm super lazy about my water changes. No, but you can see that I just got over a water change. Actually, um, I have a hose that goes um, all the way from the outside. I brought a little, uh, in Japan we have these like $15 water pumps that are used to move water from the bathtub to the washing machine because um, a lot of, you know, a lot of Japanese take really um, intense baths every day. It's a waste of water. So they're using it, reusing it inside the washing machine. Kind of crazy, but I've been doing my water changes with this, like ever since I started in the hobby, I've never bought an expensive industry pump uh, for <laughs> my aquariums. This guy, little guy has done the job for me all these years. And like one thing my old uh, sensei, Shito-san, before I even worked with Fukada and Ono-san, um, Shito-san, uh, who was the founder of the TAU team, <laughs> he did my, basic training with me. And when we were talking about husbandry, he said like water changing is like a conversation between you and the aquarium. It's a relationship, you know, if the aquarium is your lover, it's a relationship of commitments. You know, maybe if you can't do a water change this week, are you gonna make up with two dates next week? <laughs> so, um, well, I also have to think about my real wife, but you know, this is the other, this is the other one. Um, and how much time can I make for her? And in, uh, Stosan would joke, when you're uh, planning out these dates, don't think about the percentage that you're going to um, change water out. Instead, think about the time. Like 
ideally you could do 15 minutes of water in water out at the same time for instance that's one way to think about it so you can see that with both the hose and the pump set up there um, I've set myself up to do both water in and water out at the same time. Um, this hose for this hose head fortunately has quite good adjustments so I can make it so that the water going in is the same speed as the water going out um, or faster or slower so that gives quite a bit of adjustment in terms of trying to do both at the same time. Of course, the only issue with that is um, if you do if you only do that type of water change, then you're going to get gunk um, inside of the different areas of the aquarium, inside of the uh, substrate or the plants. So you will want to be doing some hosing. Um, use flexible hose to pull out uh, scum in between the plants. I'm not yet at that stage. There isn't a whole lot of um, bio buildup back there, but I'm sure there will be considering like how much we're burning the candle here um, in this setup preparing for our contests. So when that gets going, we'll have to be much more on top of that. In the meantime, like... So yeah, I'm kind of getting away with murder. Um, if it were my aquarium back in Japan, there is no way in heck um, she would have been happy with this level of neglect. But... Um, you know, like I said, all of the equipment on this tank, as well as just some incredibly great condition plants at the very start, um, the the um, the different types of species that I got from Buse plant at the beginning, as well as the in vitro cups, everything just came in really great condition and took to the water really well. So I'm really happy with how things are moving along. And as I said, I'm keeping an eye on it. I'm not, you know, I'm observing every day as you should pay attention it's a conversation between you and your aquarium and um, sometimes you can see that your spouse is happier with you than you were expecting and so you can don't neglect your relationships don't neglect your responsibilities folks i'm just saying you know life is a balance think about everything um it is a it is a contest but the aquarium contest is also a marathon it's a project management, but it's also making sure that you don't burn out just like your aquarium doesn't burn out. Find your balance. With that, um, I'd like to thank, well, all the sponsors who have helped make this aquarium project possible. I'd like to thank all of you for joining me today. Uh, please, if you like this kind of content, like, content, subscribe, go check out the master series. And oh, for folks who are in Austin and Colorado, events coming up um i'm going to be in austin next weekend and in colorado on the weekend of the 27th for future workshops um so go check out those there's details on my facebook page and um, i'll see you there hopefully so like comment subscribe take it easy bye bye